Um, hello and welcome to the Niagara Library Sewell Lens Darkly discussion with Bill Batson. It's part of a year-long Black American Culture and Art series in honor of Toni Morrison. We're happy to be able to offer programming while the doors are to the physical library remain shut. I'm your host, Tracy. Just a few things before our presenter gets started. For privacy's sake, you should know that only people with the authentic Zoom link and password were allowed into the meeting. It is being recorded. If you would like me to change your display name to guest for privacy's sake, let private message me in the chat or raise your hand. Please observe the same courtesies you would if you were in the program at the library. Mute yourselves and we ask that you complete the poll at the end of the program so we can bring you more virtual experiences like this one. Thank you. Great. So um, I don't know if it affects uh, the way this will be viewed because of the number of people, but I'm gonna show some photos. And um, if you hit, I guess, what is it? This uh, speaker view. Where's where's speaker view? Do you know where that button is? I, oh, top it's top right. Yeah. If, if you hit, there's gallery view and speaker view. So if you hit speaker screen, view. Maybe? Okay. Yeah. If you hit speaker view, yeah. When you hit gallery view, it's kind of like it depends on your reference, Brady Bunch or or Hollywood Squares. But if gonna... you. I'm gonna pin you, Bill, so that way you can you're gonna it won't move the screen for you at all. Oh, okay, good. All right. So, um, you know, I, I just uh, really uh, have loved the programming that the library um, has been developing in honor of Toni Morrison. Um, it, it's a great tribute uh, as, as an African American artist. Um, uh, and I, I have a weekly column called the Nyack Sketch Log for the last 10 years, nine years in Nyack, and I've been an artist most of my life. There's always this ambivalence about African American programming because it normally comes one month of the year. Right. And, um, you know, it, it's an opportunity and you take it, but, um, you know, there's a lot of content to cram into the shortest month of the year. So just by picking a whole year and then has a tribute to Toni Morrison. I think it's a real, um, you know, tribute to the to the Morrison legacy and to the library. So bravo. Um, and then picking this film, and I know that the um, Rivertown Film Society uh, is a partner and has recommended this film. Um, uh, I, I found it extraordinarily compelling. I'm uh, mystified I hadn't stumbled on it earlier. Um, uh, everything about it from its title to its premise to the content to the interviews um, I found uh, extremely extremely compelling um, so I'm a visual artist I I, uh, I primarily draw um, one of my drawings is right there um, but I um, I also I'm a writer um, and I'm an organizer um, I'll, I'm gonna refer to something that's behind me as well later but um I uh, was uh, about maybe 30 years ago for a brief period of time, I was the organizer for the Association of Black Photo Journalists. Oh, yeah. and, um, and it was very interesting because I learned a lot about the power of, of the image and, and how really geopolitics is often shaped around that. Um, the, um, the, the association um, was, uh, was was formed really in the aftermath of a fight between CBS News and the South African government. Mm -hmm. um, a uh, Walter Cronkite, his last project for CBS was a film called um, a documentary called "The Children of Apartheid." Mm -hmm. It was a very simple premise. He went to South Africa and he interviewed, I think, a dozen black children and a dozen white children, and possibly a dozen colored children. It was thirty years ago. I don't remember. But um, he, uh, he, he got one footage of, of a kid talking about this very t terrible um, punishment that was um, bestowed upon uh, uh, collaborators. It was called a necklace. Um, and, and you would put a tire around a person, fill the tire with gasoline and, and set it on fire. So the person would be burnt and the melt, melting tire would prevent them from escaping. So this was the, the state of the civil war there, but this 16 year old kid named Godfrey Dulomo eloquently described that in European revolutions, 
the guillotine was employed and by standards of most moral people that had a certain aspect of of, 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 of you know that was an atrocity but it was a revolutionary atrocity for purpose and it led to a free france so he made this very compelling argument that what we're doing is what nations do when they're in this thermidor period i i even think he used the word thermidor period which is a, you know description of of a revolutionary process and the south african government got early footage tracked him down and killed him wow. and then they went to cbs news and they said show that documentary with him in it and we'll throw your whole network out of the country wow. so right there you saw that that what the lens captured was so powerful mm -hmm. that it it, it it cost a child his life and and it had a country trying to kick a news network out the compromise was terrible and it was really disappointing we picketed outside of black rock and we tried to get the american committee on africa and jennifer davis and there were a couple of george hauser i think there are a couple of rockland personalities and all this um we fought to have it aired in the regular slot for walter cronkite which was like the 60 minute slot the compromise was that cbs news aired it in its totality once at 5 30 in the morning on a sunday wow and they kept their bureau so images um are are um constantly the currency of not only culture but of um of, of government and of, of change and they are they are used to denigrate they are used to uplift they're used to propagandize and this film really eloquently captures that um but the 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 material of the film is just so compelling from a historic point of view and, and a contemporary point of view. So, so I'll show you my first image. I hope this works. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna share and let me know if you can see an image. Can you see it? Not yet, not yet. As you start. It's actually saying, it's actually asking me for something. So hold on one second. Okay. Yes. You can see the image? Yes. 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 Okay, so is it, does it say I am somebody? Yes, yes. I'm a man. I, yeah, I am a man. Okay, I can't see it, you can. So, I'll, but I'll tell you about it. So that photograph captured the last political event that Martin Luther King ever attended. Right. It was the Memphis um, sanitation workers strike. Right, and right. He didn't go there to make a speech really, although he gave a speech that will be remembered until the end of time it was the mountaintop speech right it, it was a speech if you look at the end of that speech and the images you can tell it's a man who knew his debt he was about to meet his destiny um and uh and and he was there to march with these workers and the, the gentleman ernest withers who is takes this photograph is um is uh 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 in this film so um so i um found this image and um immediately as a I was the um, uh, I was a political operative, political organizer for labor union. I said this image speaks to today. I mean, this is just universal. It's perfect. It was a great photograph. It was a great event. And and you know, not only are photograph photographers, not only is this movie about photographers, but it's about people who put themselves in front of photographers for a purpose. Like right. they talk about Sojourner Truth, knowing the power of her image, and Frederick Douglass telling people that he used the lens. Um, and Marcus Garvey getting Vanderzee. So they knew the power of this image. And um, we used it for the, um, the 30th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King. So we, we put these posters up all over. And we actually also po created those posters. I am, a, a, I am somebody, because we didn't want to make it gender normative, because they say I'm a man. So the, the next ish, the image I'm going to share you is that the power of, of the image. And so sometimes this film is great because it goes back and forth between um, uh, journalism and, and fine art photography. But that was a picture that the organizers staged by having everybody hold those signs. But sometimes photos happen by accident. So this photo here, uh, can you see a picture? Yes. Okay, so this is in the early 1960s. I think it's 1961. And this is a bus that used to carry freedom riders. 
and it's um, it, it, this photograph's taken in Anniston, Alabama. And um, the uh, Chamber of Commerce of Anniston was uh, waking up, and I, I think this is in Taylor Branch's Parting the Water. They were waking up in their hotel rooms in Tokyo, Japan, and this photo splashed across the world. Wow. And the, the Japanese government woke them up early and gave them um, uh, airline tickets and sent them home and said, we will not be buying steel from you. Wow. Wow. So there was a photographer who grabbed this image, sent it to their copy editor, put it on a newspaper, and then all of a sudden geopol geopolitics shifted and Alabama couldn't sell steel in Japan. I imagine Japan was a pretty big client to lose. So then they're going to call George Wallace and say, hey, we're not going to tell you how to run your state, but no more bus burnings, please. Right. Um, it maybe gave the protesters a layer of temporary protection. I'll show you another pi picture from this time that has always moved me. It's probably one of the most, I would argue for me personally, one of the most compelling photographs I've ever seen. And there's a story behind it too. Um, this picture here is um, from Birmingham. It's from Project C, Project Confrontation. Mm -hmm. So do you see a picture? You see a little girl? Yes. Against a fence? Mm -hmm. Notice how square her shoulders are? Notice how determined her expression is? Mm -hmm. So James Bevel was a very unusual person. He actually ran as a candidate with Lyndon LaRouche in the 80s. He kind of went off the deep end. He was married to a woman named Diana Nash. But they were like the real, um, the, 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 head, the head of the spear of, this, of the civil rights movement, the organizing aspect of the movement. So they were just very, um, they were fearless. They would go into the most dangerous counties and do the most dangerous work. And the goal of Project C was to fill the jails of Birmingham so that people could continue to engage in nonviolent demonstrations without the fear of incarceration. So they would fill the jails with all the adults and then there, there was still, um, they would decide to use football fields. So then they would fill the football fields with high school students, but then they would decide to use the county fairgrounds. So then the middle school students got involved. And then one day, um, a delegation of students came to Dr. King and others and said, um, you know, we need more bodies so the elementary school students are ready to go. And Dr. King was like, uncle, nope, not going to happen on my watch. And this man named James Bevel got up and said, well, Dr. King, I'm a Baptist. And in my church, we accept the membership of six-year-olds. And if you're joining a church, you're making a decision not about your life on earth, but your eternal place in, in the universe. So how can we accept them as members and not allow them to fight mm. for what they believe is right? So these fearless children risked arrest, you know, and, um, and then what happened was later in that contest, if you remember, um, Bull Connor unleashed fire hoses and dogs on children yeah. and it was that image that got Lyndon Johnson to leap up from his desk and said you know let's get that legislation passed mm -hmm. so you know you don't you, you often think about you know history is the great speeches and the great men but but photographs will show you that you know there were children that you'll never know and and a lot of the children Diane McNair I think one of the her, I think her sister one of the little girls and the the but, Birmingham church bombing um, have, have gone on to do, do great things. And there was the little girl, uh, Elizabeth Eckford at the, um, the little rock. Um, yeah. uh, who, who, she went the wrong way one morning and got the whole crowd. So that was another photo I could have shown. So, um, so these photos are very, very powerful. Um, I'm going to just maybe show one more. Um, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't pull photos from the, um, from the, the movie, but, people saw the movie so uh i guess i'll show um well i'll show one more let's not let's let's not leave the north out of this because sometimes people think the mason dixon line yeah you know it was a demarcation of where 
racism w w existed. And we know that you could practically draw the Mason Dixon line on the Canadian border. Right. Um, so this is uh, Boston, Massachusetts. I spent some time in Boston and it's a rough country when it comes to race and, and gender and a lot of issues. Uh, they've, they've, intolerance is rooted in, in, in that soil. So this gentleman named Ted Landsmark was on his way to work and there was a busing, anti-busing protest. And it looks very much like these gentlemen are trying to impale him with the American flag. Yeah. Um, it was a shocking image that forever tarnished the, any, any of the organizers of the anti-busing movement. And um, apparently they were just hitting him with it. They weren't trying to, you know, uh, 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 they, they weren't trying to, uh, you know, stab him with it. Um, but, you know, a photograph is a photograph and the power of this image has for a long time um, really uh, uh, captured the, the, the kind of irony um, that a country that, uh, you know, purports to give freedom for all and has symbols of freedom. Sometimes, um, you know, those very images that are used to liberate people are also used to uh, denigrate, in this instance, assault people. Um, so I guess the final image I'll use is, um, so, so uh, uh, well, I'll talk a little bit, one about, there, there was a f woman in the film that we see several times named Carrie Mae Weems. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's the most exciting thing about this, um, this project. Um, what they basically suggest, I think, and, and the, the, the filmmakers, is that, that every piece of black photography, the act of black photography is in and of itself revolutionary and transformative. That every single image, because there's a contest um, for, for the humanity of, of, of a people that is at race. So, the, you know, the the, 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 the um, subtitle of it is The Emergence of a People, Black ph ph Photography and the Emergence of a People. And, um, you know, th there was a contest uh, in this country over if, if all people were free and if all people had their humanity. And one of the things that Robin uh, D.G. Kelly in this film says is that, you know, once again, the big picture story of history is that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. No, the slaves freed themselves. They survived it, they endured it, they, they, they took up arms, they, they, they played a role in their own liberation. Um, and then not only that, but through the attempt to re-enslave people after reconstruction, they insisted and they demanded their freedom. And part of that demand was to be portrayed in a way that was dignified. So while D -W, well, the, the you know, birth of a nation phenomena is occurring and by the way D.W. Griffith lived in Piermont for a short period of time. Oh wow. Ah. Um, uh, while well, that film was just pure propaganda and I want to look into it more because it really is it just it's oozing with cruelty and mockery and and lies and and it clearly it, it's like the, the it, it really it was like the um the, the, the startup for the clan and and all of these you know, uh, there was a program about um, uh, the, um, the, the minstrel images and, and, and black, um, you know, uh, the, the, some of the, um, uh, 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 the Aunt Jemima um, uh, material in, in American culture that the, the library did. And um, we were fighting against that. And the way we did it is through, the, through, our, um, through our photo albums and through our, um, you know, uh, 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 d dress and by, by using everything that we had to present ourselves in a way that was contrary to the, the, the most hostile images of ourselves. And Carrie Mae Weems is a person who kind of is out of that tradition in a way. And she basically says she wants to liberate the subject of, of the, the white gaze through her work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Nyack has been a wonderful beneficiary of the work of black photography because um, the Hopper House a couple of years ago um, was the recipient of this thing called the Edward Hopper Citation, where Carrie Mae Weems did an exhibit here. And um, she showed work called The Beacon Project. And she used, oral, she used oral histories to create a series of photographs that would document gentrification of Beacon. And she did these interviews in a record shop. And um, because of my work with the Nike Sketchlog, I was invited to um, 
uh, I was invited to to uh, uh, create a community component to that e exhibit. So we said, well, we have we have gentrification issues here. We have a black community that's been here for for centuries, um, and we have a record shop. So we recreated aspects of that as an homage to her, but also to do the important work of preserving and honoring these um, these these images. And and I know that you know, photos, I know that um, family albums are somewhat private. Um, there's a story behind every image. I know that in my family, and I got from this film too, and a lot of black families, there's a certain added um, animation to these these documents. They, they, they um, are, are kind of um, a, a way of, of um, reclaiming the dignity that was lost and, 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 and um, and kind of reversing narratives that are all over and so prevalent. And, um, and, and when we did this record shop project, you know, I began to say, I wish that we had a way to see people's family albums. I wish that we do, and maybe we do, maybe it's called Facebook. Um, but um, I think it's very, very powerful that, um, you know, uh, we, we look at documentation of family as a public act, that we look at documentation as a civic duty um, that some point in history, when history is written, um, it should include these things that we sometimes keep private. Um, and I think that that is, is something that this film does. So I'm going to end with um, a photograph of my family. So this is uh, from um, 1903. And I think for a while it may have even hung in the library so you're, you're seeing a photograph now right yes yes so um i'm gonna see if i can see it too. oh yeah so okay so i can see it too now so um the gentleman who was very handsome if i might say and <laughs> and, and yeah I, I get very i'm ambivalent sometimes about these photographs because you know full disclosure i'm adopted so I don't, I don't, I don't get the DNA of this family. I, I, I mean, I get, I got it through osmosis, I suppose. But um, uh, so the gentleman with the tie on, George T. Avery, I believe, and I've never been able to fully track this down, but I believe he was the first janitor at the Nyack Library oh, wow. when wow. after the Carnegie folks built it, and um, the tall uh, uh, woman right behind him is my grandmother, Frances Lillian Avery Batson. Who is in uh, whose comments appear in that book Nyack in Black and White, um, and this photograph they talk about it in the film as how extraordinary it is that people who really were struggling to survive and had very little economic, um, you know, uh, 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 resource um, would find ways to keep, preserve, and present themselves through their clothes, and then engage a professional photographer and have these photographs taken. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's a certain dignity that you'd find in a lot of families and Italian families and in Irish families. It's not unique to African-Americans, but it's unique that the f people in this photograph, this was if, uh, 1903, so it's 1963. So this is like 30 years after the end of slavery. So within within a very short span of time, a couple decades, these folks went from, and the house that they're standing in front of was a house that they own. So in, in 1863, in most parts of this country, they were property. And in 1903, they were property owners. And, and this, and, and I'm in my mind, when families grab these photographs and keep these photographs, that's what this photograph is asserting. It's asserting the extraordinary valor of the people in here. It's not just you know, these clothes, you know, we, we bought them, they're nice. It's that we were agents of our own liberation and we are as, have as much dignity. And remember, we are not in a mo monarchy. So we are just as important as the president and we have as much dignity and uh, authority and, 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 um, and class as anyone else in this nation. And, and it's clearly evident you know, um, to overcome such circumstances, you might argue that they have, uh, you know, cornered the market on class because to go through everything they did 
And then to put a family together like this is quite an achievement. So I think that's what this, this celebrates. Where, where was the house? It was on Jackson Avenue, 23 Jackson Avenue. 23 Jackson Avenue. Yeah, so it was, it was taken out by um, uh, uh, Urban Renewal. Right. And, and much of my, I mean, I'll end with this. Um, my sketch log is really my own attempt to reclaim images that are lost because, um, you know, I was, I, I've gone through some bratty phases and I, I've been in possession of family photographs. I have most of them, some I've lost. Um, as I've taken pictures, my father, they were obsessed with, with, with how you, the, how you, you know, the, the custody of photographs. They would say immediately after you take a photograph and print it, you need to write the date on the back of it and who is in it. And these are great thoughts that, you know, yeah. um, I, I have not lived up to, but now later in life, I'm trying to recreate it. And the house, this is the only image I have of the house. Yeah. Like the, the house is gone and there are no photographs of the front of it. So <clears throat> my first sketch log, the very first one is a drawing of a house that's behind the post office mm -hmm. that I made because um, it, uh, it, it, it is the style of the houses that were destroyed. So I went way over there. I'm sorry. That was my five minutes. <laughs> um, and I think that Tracy has a photo for, for us. I asked her to share one of her family photos. Sure. Let's see if I can share my screen. Do I have to stop mine? Um, Maybe I have to stop yes. mine. There we go. I'm getting an error message for some reason. It might want you to um, type in your password. Okay. Not your password, but your computer so that it will capture it. You know what we can do? We can start talking and I can go and grab yours from, you emailed it to me. Okay. Yeah, because it looks like it's telling me I have to quit the program for to, to accept the security. Well, yeah, don't settings. do that. So, so, so why don't we, so, so Mrs. Strand, how are you? Good. And it's Arlene. Hi, Arlene. Hi. Do you know who I am? Well, I know, I think I know your daughter. You know my daughter. You know my sister Rhonda, you know my brother Brian, you know my mother Olivia. Oh man, oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I came up here as, as, a, as a, once again, a bratty kid, and I, I didn't live in Nyack. <clears throat> we lived in Teaneck. Oh. <clears throat> so I would just come up on weekends. So like, it wasn't like I went to high school with everybody, and mm -hmm. so I know everybody, but I don't know everybody. Yeah, I know how that is. <laughs> Well, so did you see the film? Twice. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to see it again. And what did you think? I thought it was phenomenal. I mean, and it was our history. Just watched our whole history through these photographs. It was amazing. I thought, I love it. Yeah, I, I, I was um, impressed on so many levels. Yeah. I, I told my mom... She could leave me whatever, but I want all the photographs. <laughs> ah. So I got first dibs on them. Because <laughs> so I think they're so important. So what, how do you, how do you, um, so are they in like traditional, you know who has some great photos? Um, you, you, you know, Judy Whitby? Yes. She's got some really great photos. Yeah. I'll tell you who had some awesome photos. I don't know where they are now. I guess his daughter has them. Leonard Cook. Oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. the, the, yeah. The the um, the the historical society has some yeah. of them too. Yeah, yeah. they have yeah. some of him, yeah. but he had boxes and boxes and boxes, and I would look go look at them sometimes. It was just amazing. Well, good for him. I guess Juanita has the net. Of, you know, they're both gone. Yeah. Yeah, so wait, hold on one second. I'm about to. Hey, Bill, I I... can you hear me? This, this Who's is that? Sharon. Sharon. Hi, Sharon. How are you? Yeah. Um, I didn't get to see the film, but I was just curious in terms of your your um, 
artistry if if you started with photographs or if you take photographs yourself or i know you were talking about collecting your your family's photos but um yeah, yeah i am um, well uh, you know it's, it's funny that you say that let me think if i have <clears throat> i'm gonna walk away just for a split second sure oh yeah i have a, okay remember that photo that i showed earlier so, oh, you, so you know the draw. There's a drawing. Now, this okay. This is the pain of, you know, um, you know, having to uh, to realize that you have have kind of let down your, the the generations that that got you where you are. My father gave me this photograph of um of his Boy Scout troop, oh, and nice. the drawing exists. And on the back of that photo. And, and I want to maybe do some research because there are a lot of people in that photo. So there are probably other photos of it, but he had written down every single name of every uh -huh. kid in the troop. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't have that. And I, at one point I wanted to do a piece that had that. So Isn't that great. Oh my God. But, but you know, it's uh, interesting. A lot of times when you, when you can really admit that you've made a mistake, it, it actually fuels you to, to correct it. to so like redeem <laughs> yourself. So, so I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, so I take care of the photos I have now, but so this is a drawing of the photo that I just showed you. So I work oh, from family yeah, photos that's a lot. Great. That's yeah. And, and, that's and they do, great. They, they do mention that um, a lot of the, uh, a lot of black artists reference family photos. And I, I, I bet you, mm -hmm. I bet a lot of artists do. Mm -hmm. But speaking mm -hmm. of family photos, yep, yep. Yep. wait a second, hold on. I'm, I'm having trouble. I, I thought I had, I thought I had your photo, Tracy. It's, it's really, it's, oh, here we go. Open, open. Okay, here we go. So I don't know which one I'm going to show. I don't know which one you want me to show first. I'm going to show this one first. So Tracy, tell us about this picture. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's so beautiful. These are the uh, Palmer sisters. Um, the one on the right is my grandmother, and her name is Myrtle. And then the one in the middle is my, uh, my mom was raised by, her mother, but also her mom's sister, the one in the middle. So I call her grandma too. Um, <laughs> and then the other one is their oldest uh, sister who died when she was maybe about a year after this picture was taken. So about in her 20s. Oh, they're beautiful. It, it is beautiful. Wow. And it's very um, surreal. Is it three photographs merged yes. into one? Yeah, because they were damaged and my mom found them somewhere at my grandmother's house and she was, she wanted to um, preserve them. So she put them together like that. Wow. And then gave it to everybody in the family so they could all have a copy. That's a great, that's a smart thing to do. Yeah, that's fabulous. They don't get lost. Nice job. I love their clothes. They're very sartorial. Well, back then you always wanted to present yourself as best as you could. So right. you came out and did yes. your best, no matter where you were going. Yeah. And especially if there was a camera around. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when we lived in Camp Shanks, we would have to come to Nyack to go to the grocery store, to the Grand Union. And mom would, you know, comb the hair yep. and get you all cleaned up and she'd get all cleaned up and you get you got all dressed up to go grocery shopping. <laughs> nice, nice. And now people grocery shop in their pajamas at home. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the one in the middle, she's the only one who's still alive and she is very, yeah, she has to be dressed up. She has to look a certain way before she does anything. So now, um, where is this? Uh, they're in um, Kingston, Jamaica in 1940s. Nice, nice. Beautiful. I, I love their expressions. They, they each have their own unique expressions. <laughs> That's true. And they all have flowers. They're wearing flowers. Oh, yes, right. Photographed with flowers. Yeah, it's a joke that yes. every Jamaican always takes a picture in the olden days with sitting next to a flower for some reason. Oh, wow. Know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, if you're, in, if you're in the Garden of Eden. All right, so here, here's nice. another. Very I got nice. another one. I got another one to share. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so, a nice. This is the one in the middle, um, Myrtle, oh, not Myrtle, sorry, uh, Doreen, her wedding day. And the one on the um, far left, you just kind of blurry. That's my um, grandmother. And my mother is 
in the front row, the three little girls, she's the one at the end. Oh. <laughs> not sure why they look so mad in that picture, but. Um. So what year was this, Tracy? 1950 something, 54 maybe. Oh. Okay. Really nice. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. And that's Jamaica as well? Yes, also Kingston, Jamaica. Probably King Street Baptist Church. It's the church that- mm -hmm. um, Can I Andrew. show a picture? Sure. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I'll be right back. Very good. So, um, I guess the only thing that we didn't touch on and, and, and just- Yeah. I, I think you can't, you can't, um, you can't ignore it and you almost can't you have to look away but they're the very disturbing images of the lynchings and the edmund the oh, uh, yeah. the the till yeah. the edmund till photo edmund till, right and um and even uh, to this day it's interesting one of the uh, the 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 historians who spoke of it said that you can't um that every time you see it it, it, it hurts like you the first time you saw it i almost feel like it hurts more yeah. Um, yeah, and if you think about what happened in Georgia, yeah, well, that's that today, was criminal. That was sad. Oh, um, you know, so savaging a black person is a, is still a way for some people to gain social standing. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, and and uh, and so we we've you know I guess what when you see an image like that, there's one person who says I forgot it was the the the, the photographer Dakara I think is his name is the. The one that everybody came up from Harlem to, to came to Harlem to see. Uh -huh. He said uh -huh. the power of a photograph is that it's always now. Uh -huh. Even if it's a photograph right. that was taken of somebody a hundred years ago, it brings you right. into the now. Right. And when you think about that being now, the Edmund Till or the lynching photos, and to know that it really is now, that it hasn't gone away, it's very very disturbing. So I I'm I I mean I I. I I, I hate to admit this, and I sometimes have to, because when I was a kid, they would show, um, and, and I grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey, and they would show this, um, they showed this documentary called Night and Fog. It was, um, oh, yeah. the oh, yeah. United States took images of the concentration camps. So, you know, that yeah. got burnt into yeah. my retina. And, and yeah. they kind of, the teachers, the parents had to sign the slip, and I, I saw it in class. Yeah. But as I get older, my, sure. my, my tolerance for these images has, becomes less and less and less. So yeah. I, I didn't see 12, 12 Years a Slave. I wrote about it. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I read. I read the Salma Northup. You know, I read. I read yeah. it. Yeah. But I can't see it. So, <clears throat> I mean, that's the power of images too. I mean, it really yeah. is. They're they're visceral. They <clears throat> they they are the the, the, the that's why the, as propaganda, they're so powerful because they they you know what, what advertisers try to do is touch you emotionally, mm -hmm. and and words are powerful. And Dr. King knew words are powerful. But all these men and women also knew that images were equally powerful. And that's what this film was about. So, um, Arlene, let's see yeah. your phone. So just hold it up. Oh, oh, wow. oh wow. wow. That's my mother's par parents. That's 1914. Oh, wow. That's a great photo. They look so dignified. Yes. I think that was their wedding. It was either the wedding day or he was going off to World War One. I forget. Wow. Yeah. And wow. they were both first Beautiful. generation born free. First generation born free. Their parents were emancipated slaves. Wow. Wow. And this is my husband's, um, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, look. Yeah, that's beautiful. Wow. His family. Yeah, that that's in the fifties. That's when people were out of Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you everybody on this call cleans up pretty good. <laughs> I, I shaved when I got on this call, like with, with, <laughs> with Tracy. I was like, I better go and shave because my grandmother. I'm talking about her, and she won't be pleased. <laughs> so you know, history is not in the past. It, it it's actually it, it's in front of us. It's behind us. It's not. I, like I, I actually, you know, I live in a house that is on the land of the Jewett family in Upper Nyack, and my <laughs> grandmother was a maid for the family. Wow. And um, you know, the uh, that's why many people traffic in lies and try to obliterate oh, records. Please. Like 
especially the more, you know, the more fascistic and the more totalitarian, you know, the regime, the more fundamental, you know, um, books are burned and, and yeah. memories are destroyed because they're liberating to know how dignified and, you know, to know that, um, that black people never looked anything like any single image in Birth of a Nation. It was all false, oh, yeah. all fake. Yeah. And, and yet, yeah. because of the power of repetition, it, 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 it is, it, it's impressed, it's imprinted in people's minds. And the worst thing ever, the world can think whatever you want. The world can think whatever it wants of you. But the worst thing is if you internalize that thought. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we know that that's what happens. Yeah. We, we, are, we are not immune to this. So maybe having these family photos around, maybe that would actually give kids some armor. Yeah. You know, so, so I would yeah. love to work with the library to create an opportunity for people to right. share their, their family photos. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Great idea. I like that. Well, thank you, Bill. I have to go. That was wonderful. Hope to, to see you feel. soon. Yes, be well. Yeah, I hope to see. Yeah, we don't. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing you now. In I'm passing, gonna, yes. All right. Be all well, right, everyone. Right now. So, okay. Tracy, you want to wrap up? Uh, sure. Um, Arlene, if you're interested in um, more about the program series, if you go to our website, there's a, a link for Tony Morrison. And Bill's article on the program series is on there as well. So okay. Check it out. All right. And, and make sure you tell Morgan I was here. I will. <laughs> I hope to see you again. Yeah, thank you for coming. Thank oh, so you. I saw your, yeah, I saw your sister just the other, I mean, I'm, who is, I saw um, Rhonda? Yeah. Just the, like, just the other day at Hook Mountain. Tell her I said hi. I will, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, bye, bye thank you so much. Okay, bye. bye, -bye. Be in touch, Casey. Okay. You too, thanks, thank you, Bill. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome, thank you. Right. Bye. bye now. Okay.